Hello and welcome to our Ash Wednesday meditation. The meditation is in two parts and you might wish to pause for a while after part one. That's entirely up to you. Each part will be a reading from a psalm, a meditation, a period of reflection and some music. So let's begin part one, a reading from Psalm 51. God, give me mercy from your fountain of forgiveness. I know your abundant love is enough to wash away my guilt. Because your compassion is so great, take away this shameful guilt of sin. Forgive the full extent of my rebellious ways and erase this deep stain on my conscience, for I am so ashamed. I feel such pain and anguish within me. I can't get away from the sting of my sin against you, Lord. Everything I did, I did right in front of you, for you saw it all. Against you and you above all have I sinned. Everything you say to me is infallibly true, and your judgment conquers me, Lord. I have been a sinner from birth, from the moment my mother conceived me. I know that you delight to set your truth deep in my spirit. So come into the hidden places of my heart and teach me wisdom. Purify my conscience. Make this leper clean again. Wash me in your love until I'm pure in heart. Satisfy me in your sweetness and my song of joy will return. The places within me you have crushed will rejoice in your healing touch. Hide my sins from your face. Erase all my guilt by your saving grace. Create a new heart within me. Fill me with pure thoughts and holy desires, ready to please you. May you never reject me. May you never take from me your sacred spirit. So here we are, Ash Wednesday, the 40 days of Lent begin. We're remembering Jesus' 40 days of fasting in the desert, where he endured and defeated temptation. And in turn, we're preparing to make our own prayer and fasting. Normally we would receive a black ashy cross drawn on our foreheads, a bit of strange old fashioned ritual. But it is an outward sign of something going on inside and such sacramental signs are helpful in our walk with God. The 40 days and nights are a symbol too. They remind us of the time Moses spent in conversation with God on Mount Sinai and they remind us of the time it rained after Noah had loaded the ark. Both are pictures of creation taking time out with God, giving God space to speak, giving God space to forgive, to heal, to lead. So this ritual reminds us to take time out and to give God access to our lives. How much access are you willing to give God? Is it fettered or unfettered? And in normal times, as the minister places the ashes on our foreheads, they say, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. These are words which immediately take us back to any funerals we might have attended. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes, reminding us of our mortality, that we brought nothing with us and that we will leave with nothing. And that many of those things in life on which we placed great value, maybe careers, status, spending power, even vocations, are all left behind in our death. But there are also echoes in these words of the opening book of the Bible, Genesis, where dust and ashes are breathed into life by the Creator God. So these words take us all the way back to our beginning, offering us a fresh start, a slate wiped clean. So during this Lent, I encourage you to seize the 40 days. Grasp the opportunity to re-evaluate, to recalibrate your life and your priorities. How will you grasp this opportunity this year? 
what will you reflect on? Our Heavenly Father's desire for us is that we have life in all its fullness. And to have that, we have to become Christ-centred, positioning ourselves in a place where he can heal us and fill us. And when we are Christ-centred, we won't be able to help but become Jesus-shaped, exuding his love, joy and peace. We won't be able to help but share God's love with others, drawing them towards that same love. And we won't be able to help contributing to God's kingdom coming on earth. So what's blocking our channel with God? Maybe it's an addiction, a habit we're not proud of. Maybe some bitterness, a little anger, some unforgiveness. Maybe it's a self-centeredness distracting us from our focus on God, stopping us praying, stopping us giving thanks, stopping us benefiting from the wonder of God's parenthood of us. Why not stop holding on to this? Place yourself in an accessible place to God. Give God space to speak. Allow God space to forgive you. Give God space to heal you. Allow God space to lead you. And who knows what fruit will emerge in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are priceless and eternal. Not subject to the laws of dust and ashes. So allow me now, on behalf of all of us, to place the cross of ash on my own forehead. And if you would like to make the shape of cross on your own forehead at the same time, let it be the sign for you of a fresh start. Here we go. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. And with those sentences, we have the chance to begin again. So can I encourage you now to take a minute of silence to reflect on that, to offer yourself back to God, to become Christ-centred, to reflect on what you have been, and what you can be in Christ, to become Jesus-shaped. Let's pray. O oh Lord, I experience my dustiness in so many different ways. Usually, I try to ignore it or I complain about it. But today, I'm letting the fact of my mortality sink in. I'm reminded of how much I need to be saved and set free. I'm reminded of how much I need you. May these 40 days be a time for me to grow in my relationship with you. May I be unafraid to look at myself honestly, especially those parts of my life that are all too dusty. 
may I turn to you. Help me to give you access to my heart and mind so you can begin your healing work in me. I praise you, Lord, that you love me. Like a mother or father, thank you that you've not abandoned me. Thank you for the hope that you offer to me. I gladly accept it. i uh-huh.
I'll now offer a second meditation which follows on from the first, inviting us to look at our relationship with God's creation. You might want to carry straight on with me now, or you might want to sit with part one for the moment and maybe come back later. If so, just hit pause. So our second reading is from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. I wonder what work has started to be done in your lives, in the silence, in the prayer and the music that we've just had. I do hope something started and that something will continue throughout these 40 days. I pray that you will continue to give God unfettered access to your life and that renewal will continue. One thing is clear, that if you decide to continue this work, before you and me lies a life of reconversion and recommitment to loving God and to loving our neighbour with our whole heart. God will open our eyes to the larger picture. He will give us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others and will motivate us to greater concerns for nature and for the poor. So for this second reflection, let's look outside of ourselves to one example where that will be the case, bearing in mind that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. We're going to give attention, holy attention, to the world around us and I'd like to use three lenses, a relational lens, a sacramental lens, and an incarnational lens. Firstly, the relational lens. Sometimes we think of creation as a single act of God in the distant past, and we forget that God is always creating, even now. In the birth of new creatures, in the appearance of new species, and in the cycle of life that is renewed every day. In God, all creation has its common source, and there is a profound interdependence among all creation. We humans are but a single part of a vast and interconnected community of creation in relationship with God, and each part has value in itself. So as we become Jesus-shaped, we are more likely to practice discipline in our use of the Earth's resources, and to make ecologically and environmentally responsible choices. A sacramental lens. St Paul, St Augustine, St Thomas Aquinas, Karl Rahner all remind us that everything is full of sacred presence. Everything has the capacity to reveal the living God. In other words, everything in creation is a sacrament a living sign of its creator. Creation, by its very nature, reveals God to us. Our current way of life, which obscures and diminishes the richness of life around us, deprives us of the fullest revelation of God, which is symbolically revealed to us through the extravagant diversity and beauty of nature. And such a dulled view of creation proves less inspiring as a call for us to play our part in the re revitalization of the environment by making ecologically good choices. We do better to go out of our way to view the world lovingly and to be awed by its mystery, 
seeing God's presence in simple earthly things. An incarnational lens. The world is a reflection of the word, the creator, Jesus, whose good news for the poor, oppressed and ravaged, includes the earth itself. Our bond with the natural world is rooted not only in our common creation story and the common stuff of our material existence, but also in the presence and action of the living God within and for the world. This helps us to avoid a worldview which is centred on humanity and motivates us to live in good relationship with the world of which we are part, to protect and restore Earth's ecosystems. It encourages us to be prophets in our culture, to insist we humans own up to our part in environmental ruin, and to cast a vision of a flourishing humanity on a thriving Earth in an evolving universe, altogether filled with the glory of God. So as we consider creation through these three lenses, relational, sacramental, incarnational, let's spend a moment of quiet, thinking our, about our part in what has gone before and how we can play a part in bringing hope. I'd like to offer three prayers from three bishops in the Church of England. Stephen Croft of Oxford, Libby Lane of Stockport and David Walker of Manchester. Let's pray. Creator of our common home, you fill the earth and sea and sky with life. Forgive us our neglect of your creation, the choking waste of pollution, the damage done by careless habits, and our indifference to future generations. Help us to amend our lives, to refuse more plastic if we can't reuse it, to lift our voice for lasting change and to live well and gently on the earth, to the glory of your Son, the living Word, through whom you made this fragile world. Amen. Eternal God, whose Spirit moved over the face of the deep, bringing forth light and life, by that same Spirit renew your creation and restore your image in your people. Turn us from careless tenants to faithful stewards, that your threefold blessing of clean air, pure water and rich earth may be the inheritance of everything that has the breath of life, and one generation may proclaim to another the wonder of your works, through Jesus Christ your living word, in whom the fullness of your glory is revealed. Amen. Heavenly Father, all creation is your handiwork. Grant us your grace that we may exercise wise stewardship of this earth, tread lightly upon it and cherish its resources, that our children may enjoy its riches throughout all generations, and your name be glorified through all that you have made. Amen.
Jesus, come, Lord Jesus.